Tonight, 10 days to polling. We discuss all the issues in the same-sex marriage referendum debate and the chair of the Adoption Authority addresses the impact of the vote on adoption in Ireland. Welcome to the programme. In just over 10 days' time, Ireland will go to the polls. On Friday, the 22nd of May, the electorate will be asked if the following amendment can be added to the Constitution. Marriage may be contracted in accordance with law by two persons without distinction as to their sex. And there are just two options, yes or no. We'll be debating all of the issues over the next hour with Fine Gael Director of Elections for the Referendum, Minister Simon Coveney, and Independent Senator Ronan Mullen. And our audience, of course, who are evenly divided between those in favour of and those against the referendum. First, though, here are two authored films, each advocating a different outcome to the referendum for very different reasons. The order of these reports was decided by random selection, overseen by an adjudicator outside the RTE News and Current Affairs Department. My name is Eamon Farrell and I'm an Irish married man. This is my husband, Stephen. We married in Canada almost six years ago. It was an incredibly happy time for us. But it was also filled with sadness at the fact that we had to marry in another country, not in our home. When I asked Stephen to marry me almost six years ago, I didn't ask him to gay marry me, to civil partner me, or to same-sex marry me. I asked him to marry me because I love him, and he's the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. The first time I was ever called a queer, I was seven years old and it was by an adult in school. The last time I was called a queer was a few days ago, when I was out on a canvas. And we've also received hate mail in recent days. But I'm not a queer. I'm a married Irish man. Essie. Ireland is great because of its people. People like my friend, Senator David Norris, who fought to win the legal right to be gay for every LGBT person in Ireland. I asked him what he thought when he heard we had gotten married. Well, I thought, isn't it wonderful that young people find happiness together and they're not as scarred as people of, of my generation were? So I thought it was wonderful and I applauded. Because I think it was rather sad uh, that the two of you had to go abroad uh, to validate your love. I, 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 I don't see why that couldn't happen in this country. What do you think the repercussions will be if there is a no vote? Oh, if there's a no vote, it'll be the most tremendous slap in the face for young gay people. So I really hope, for the sake of young people and, and gay children, that it will not happen. So when the vote passes, hopefully, and if we get to get married in Ireland, will you come to our wedding? I would love to come to your <laughs> wedding. It'll be one of the happiest days of my life. What you're voting on in this referendum is real life. It's our lives. The essence of our lives is love. And at the end of my life, there will be Stephen. And that should be recognised equally. Myself and my husband love Ireland. We love living here and we are committed to her future. I've always believed in my country and I always will. It's time now to see at last if my country believes in me. My name is Paddy Manning. I'm gay and I'm voting no. I grew up in an Ireland where gay people like me were not just criminals. We were invisible. How could we find love when we couldn't even find each other? I was arrested, not for doing something indecent, but for being naive enough to fall for a Garda sting operation. Enough that I had approached the guard involved. You can't imagine my terror or my belief that I now had only one very final way out. I've always believed that gay people like me are as entitled to love, happiness and stability as everybody else. But we don't need to redefine marriage for that. Outside Leinster House, members of the gay community were celebrating the bill to decriminalise homosexuality. Decriminalisation and civil partnership sorted all that for gay people. Like every same-sex couple, I and a boyfriend 
cannot have a child without a parent outside of our family. All same-sex marriage does is to deprive the child of a right to that parent. But also, it means we can't legally privilege a mother and father model in adoption. And it puts surrogacy at the heart of family law. Senator, I understand you share my concerns for families and putting this into family law. Yeah, well, I just think that the redefinition of family is going to have severe consequences. And I think most people who think about this will see that relationship between, you know, gay couple, two men or two women, is different. It's, it's distinguished from a man and a woman. And that's yes. because of the children issue. Marriage, to me, is the only civil institution which unites kids with their mams and their dads. Now, why the minister and the Taoiseach and the Taunishta would want to abolish that institution, which in fact is the fundamental cornerstone of society, is beyond belief. I think it's unconscionable. You can't change what happened to me. You can't take away the loneliness and terror I felt then by depriving children of rights now. This referendum is not about signals or feelings. It's about children and family law. I hope you'll have the courage to vote no. That's Paddy Manning. And I want now to have a quick word with Paddy and first with Eamon, who's here. Eamon, you're here with, with your husband, Stephen. Paddy Manning and uh, Jim Daly raised concerns in his report about children. What do you say to that? I say that my marriage is about Stephen and me. It's about... Uh, the, the whole referendum is about same-sex marriage and we're same-sex, obviously, and we're married. So I think we're in a pretty good position to be able to say um, how we feel about the whole thing. I don't really think it has to do with children. I think it's a red herring. I think children are already protected in the Constitution, in Article 42. The best, um, whatever best is, is for children is in that article. So um, I think that that um, we're in a pretty good position to... And Stephen, what's your view? Because we saw Senator Jim Walsh, I should say, voicing his concerns about children, and lots of people on the no side have raised similar issues. So obviously I'm here in support of yes equality and a yes in the marriage referendum on the 22nd of May. I have never been bullied in my life until now. I have never received hate mail in the post until now, never experienced such cruelty until now. And all I can say is I'm here in support of a yes vote because I know yes is right for Ireland. I know yes is right for the children of Ireland, for our brothers and our sisters and our families. That's what it's about. It's about our love for each other okay. and the future. Can all I right. just say one more thing? Just one more little thing. My mother got married last year. She was lucky enough to find a new husband and she's 71 and he's 76. And I don't think children are on the agenda for them. <laughs> I, I may be wrong. Okay. Paddy Manning, Paddy, we, we saw your report there and we've heard from, from Eamon and Stephen who are married but married in British Columbia. I mean, isn't that just a strange thing that they can get married in British Columbia but not in Ireland? I can't really comment on their personal issues there. I can't see why they couldn't have availed of um, civil partnership law here, which does everything you need to do. There are differences. Well, of course there are. We're different. I'm not the same as a straight person. I make no apology for that. I don't want to be. I'm a gay man. And I'm very proud of that. And I love gay people. I just wish there was lots more of us. Make my social life a lot better. <laughs> you know? And if you want to talk about cruelty and bullying and all of that, I received a tsunami of hate from Yes campaigners for my stance. Some of that has been so bad that I've actually feared for my personal safety and other people close to me. And that was shocking. The bullying that's going on in this campaign, the bullying of ordinary people who are being told there are opinions they can't hold, that they can't even think about this. And the politicians have stood over this. We have, if you put up a poster for the No campaign, you are guaranteed it'll be taken down. I, have made a, I am in the process of making a formal complaint to the Gardaí about a photograph that I've received declaring there are now no, no posters left in Carlo. People are boasting on social media of criminal activity and nothing's been done. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later on, about the fear around saying, yeah. saying no and discussing that. But I, want to come, I want to come back over to this side now. Enda Morgan. Enda, you're a, a yes supporter. Tell us why. Sure. Um, my eldest daughter, Rachel, is 27. And about five years ago, she came out to my wife and I. And that night was, it was pretty harrowing. 
uh, not hiring him because of the fact that she declared that she was gay, but hiring him from the perspective that she was under such stress. She was so distressed coming out to us. And she explained to us that for several years before she came out, she was living in this bubble of anxiety and self-doubt. And she was really trying to come to terms with her sexuality and come to terms, more importantly, with coming out to us. And I held her in my arms when she came out. She was crying and shaking uncontrollably. And that is not a very, very pleasant experience. So what does, the, what does a, a yes in this referendum mean then for you? It means we are showing our children that we're bringing acceptance to their lives, recognition. We're normalising it. It means that, you know, if a no vote came in, we would be saying to our children, OK, you're gay, but it's just not quite right to be so. All right, we're going to talk to some people now who've changed their minds. <laughs> Timothy. <clears throat> Timothy um, Sutton, you were voting yes, am I right? But you've changed and you've now decided you're going to be a no voter. Correct. Tell us why. Because I looked into it and, and since then, this proposal taken, you know, with the provisions of the Children's and Family Relations Bill, removes mention of mother and father from a whole range of existing legislation. And at 37, Brunrock Naherne has stood us well. And I wouldn't like to see any fissures in the, in the family unit. So it was particularly those issues that you have and the concerns you have around the family and children that changed your mind, that, that changed you from being a yes voter to a no? Correct. Okay, and we have Derek Byrne on this side, and Derek, you crossed the divide from the other side, if you like, because you had written about being a no voter, but now you're a yes voter. Yeah, I feel like I'm coming out all over again today um, <laughs> with um, my article uh, talking about why I'm now deciding to vote yes. And um, I think initially what I was concerned about was the lack of debate, particularly within the gay community, on the issue and what it was exactly we were looking for by um, voting for a change in, in marriage law in, in the referendum. Um, but through talking to friends, and I mean, I genuinely did listen to what people had to say. I, I have uh, experienced some bullying from within gay ranks, which hasn't been pleasant. Um, but I really put my heart and soul into the debate and finally decided to pare it all back. And I was delighted to hear you read the wording of the, the referendum, because I think we've really forgotten that mm -hmm. throughout this entire yeah, yeah, yeah. debate. So... So you may, you, may not, you may not agree with the institution of marriage per se, but as an act of solidarity, you're voting yes. Yeah, I, as an act of solidarity, as a gay man, I'm voting yes, because I think at the end of the day, and David Norris used the word uh, validation earlier on, it's purely about our right to love and validation for our own relationships. And okay. um, Kirsten, on this side then, Kirsten, you're welcome to the programme. Hi, how are you? What concerns do you have around this referendum? Um, well, I suppose for my generation, I feel uh, very much so that making new laws, uh, particularly when it comes to marriage, um, it's not just redefining marriage, you're actually reconfiguring the family unit. Um, and I think that in, in itself, I think, ultimately affects society's social standing and society's structure, the structure of, of society. And uh, for my generation, I think there's an awful lot of pressure to, 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 for equality. But I don't see much equality for children in this. Mm -hmm. Children, where do the children... <laughs> Every child deserves a mother and a father and the balance of both. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have gay friends. I have people that, are, that I love that are gay. I, it's not about gay versus not being gay. Uh, but I think it's very much so about um, the structure of man and woman. And you cannot deny the byproduct of marriage is children. Mm -hmm. And you can't deny what nature has intended. All right. Well, let's, yeah. let's go to our panellists now and discuss that further question. Senator Ronan Mullen, that comes up time and time again, issues around children, around the family, around surrogacy and adoption. Can you just tell us what your concerns are? Well, you're right, because if it was only about how we feel about gay people, I don't think anybody could oppose it. I certainly, speaking for myself, and I think for most people here, I want a society where there is love and respect for everybody, respect for people's private lives and their personal relationships. And I remember during the civil partnership debate where Senator Fergal Quinn and myself had objections and I opposed it because those objections were not dealt with. Those were objections that we totally supported the principle that there would be respect for people's relationships. 
but it was important to do justice to other people like older folk or people who might be discriminated against because the government, like this government, was just rushing the thing through so fast. But I just want to, to answer to the, yes. the key issue around children. The, the concern is, you see, what we are amending here is the part of the Constitution where the state pledges to guard with special care the institution of marriage on which the family is founded. So we aren't just changing the meaning of marriage. We're changing the meaning of family that will enjoy constitutional protection. And as a result of that, it will be impossible for the Oireachtas in the future to make any preference for a child's right to have a father and a mother, their own father and mother preferably, but even to have a father and mother. And it isn't just about adoption where there's a small number of cases involved. If you take, you asked me about surrogacy. What surrogacy means, if you have a right to found a family, if you are a same-sex male couple, what that means in practically all circumstances is that an egg has to be harvested from one woman and another surrogate mother carries the child for nine months and that is the last bit of mothering that that okay. child ever gets. It will be impossible for us to restrict that. Okay. That is a legal fact. We will come back to you. Minister Simon Coveney, this debate has always come back to these issues around children and the family, adoption and surrogacy. Can you give us any clarity in relation to what Senator Mullen has just said? Of course I can, but can I just clarify a number of... Um, a number of issues that have been raised here. First of all, the definition of a family according to the courts, consistent with what's in the Constitution, is a married mother and father with or without children. And so children is not the centre of what we're talking about here. The issues, the issues that relate to children uh, on the, the question of voting yes or no on Friday week relate directly to young gay children that are growing up and whether or not we accept them for who they are and what they are and who they choose to love. Okay. And, and, you know, but, and the issues, but Minister, the issues of access to children, Claire, because that's the issue that's around the, surrogacy that's the, and adoption. That's the bit that they have the concerns about here. The issue around access to children will not change whether you vote yes or no on Friday week. Because the, the position in relation to access to children and parenting requires the government to legislate, as we have done around adoption and guardianship and foster care uh, uh, and so on, uh, in the uh, uh, Child and, and Family Relationships Bill, as um, uh, Keith Mills, for example, when he was on The Late Late Show, pointed out, when he was actually asked by a young woman who was raised by two mothers, uh, and he was asked the question, do you recognise my family? And he said it's important to recognise here that parenting is a separate issue dealt with in legislation, but what we're actually asking people to decide on here is, do we allow two same-sex people who love each other, who want to commit the rest of their lives together, do we allow them access marriage? That's what this is about, to reinforce their relationship, their love, who they are. Okay, so it and that's what this is about, so, not surrogacy. Okay, so and finally, can I say on surrogacy, Claire? Finally, can I say on surrogacy, because it is important to nail this issue. Even the uh, legal opinion put together for the Iona Institute has confirmed that under no circumstances will governments be required to provide surrogacy to same-sex or heterosexual, sex, uh, uh, heterosexual couples if they're married because of a perceived right to have children. Okay. That is so not the case. There's no right I'm conferred afraid, here to I'm have afraid, children. Yeah, I'm afraid that's not nailing the issue. That's continuing the denial. Because the fact is... <laughs> if, and this is a legal fact. If you were a constitutional family based on marriage, which same-sex married couples will be, it would be impossible to do like some countries have done, for example, to say that if there's going to be surrogacy, it can only be where the child is going to a male-female parenting model. That would be simply unconstitutional, Simon, and I, I really don't so think the government should deny it. Just, I just want to ask you, what additional rights then do gay couples get in relation to surrogacy, do, well, as you see it? Well, the, 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 it, it is that we would not, the Oireachtas would not be able to give any preference to insisting that where possible a child would have a father and mother. Where Simon talks about parenting and fa it is Simon. Where Simon talks about parenting and families, we can legislate and rightly for situations, for example, where same-sex couples are bringing up a child of one or other of them. That already happens, and guardianship can be provided, and that would be one of the good things in the recent Children and Family Relationships Bill. But unfortunately, by changing the constitutional definition of marriage, we are copper fastening the bad things in that legislation, and the legislature, the Iraqis will not be able to well, go back on well, them. First of all, you really first of all, should first of all, that. First of all,
First of all, it has been made very clear uh, by the uh, Referendum Commission that we are not changing the definition of marriage. What we are doing here is we are allowing access to marriage to a minority of people in Ireland who have been locked out from that. I think okay? that shows no, how... No. And, and the second point I want to make is, is that Ronan seems to be suggesting that we should be segregating people on the basis of who's married and who's not. That would also apply to heterosexual couples. So, so we, would be, we would be preventing heterosexual couples who have decided not to get married for whatever reason, and they, and they may have very valid reasons, from not accessing certain services. So in other words, Rona wants to use marriage to actually lock same-sex couples out from certain services and supports that they may use, uh, that they may want to access. I don't know what and that is, is. That, is, that is fundamentally a charter for discrimination that Ronan is looking to ensure. Well, well, it would be. Yeah. That's it, exactly what it, you're looking it, for. It would be. It would be if that's what my argument amounted to, but I don't know what planet the minister went to to get that bizarre interpretation. The fact is... The fact is... This is just, for people, just for people at home, right? Yes. You are concerned that if this referendum is passed, that married gay couples will have access to surrogacy when we legislate for surrogacy in this country. I am saying that before is we even... But is that the case? No, let me just explain it. Before we even legislate for surrogacy, the government is proposing to tie our hands so that we wouldn't be able to restrict it, for example, to male-female couples. And can I assure you that I completely support every possible support for families in whatever situation they're in. And, for example, single parents, who the government have tried to get offended, even though none, none of this debate has been about them, but the government has tried, and it's, I really Sorry. regret this, Claire. the government has tried to use people. It has tried to use the mental health of young gay people. Sorry. A responsible, okay. a responsible Claire, government would be to saying to people, a responsible government would be saying to people, no matter what way people vote, whether you're gay or straight, you are entitled Claire. to the okay. same love Claire, and respect yeah. which civil no, 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 partnership no, no, gives. Okay. You shouldn't no, be using people no, as battering no, rams no, to no, score no, a political there's only, point. There's only one side in this argument, and it's, it's only the leadership on the no side that are actually using children to try and scare people. Right? The, the, the position is, the position in, and, is, and Ronan knows it, uh, we have to legislate and regulate surrogacy in Ireland. We may decide to outlaw surrogacy in Ireland as indeed lots of other countries have in the European That's Union. That's not what the Minister no, of no, Health has said. No, sorry, that is, that, is up to the, that is up to the Oireachtas to decide, right? And, uh, and we will have to decide that in due course. But the issues around surrogacy and the regulation or outlawing of it or legislation around it is a separate issue to this no, referendum. Right. This, is, this is a deliberate, okay. this is a deliberate political okay, strategy. Look, but can I finish on this no, point? There's a leader no, 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 even no, if you, you couldn't finish, actually you see, be sure. You don't want me to get to the point, Ron. No, I do, but you You don't want me to get to the point because you don't like to hear it. Get to the point really The issue is the leadership on the no side here want us to be debating surrogacy because they know that it is an issue that concerns people as it concerns me. And the more we talk about issue that concern, an issue that concerns people, the more people get spooked around issues around it. Simon, the okay. truth is to be, that I there think, is I, no connection right. between no, the we, question of the I think in fairness, uh, I, on Simon, Friday week I think and what, surrogacy. What I want you, you know to do it, is to start caring. You know it. What, what, no. We're going to move on. Have a please. What, what, what I want you to do... It's a political what tactic. I, what I want you to know, I, no, I'm an independent. Argument. I don't follow the party whip. I try and tell it as it is. Um, I want you to respect. I want you to respect all children equally, and not to deprive so any children up front and in advance of the possibility of being brought into the world and cared for and loved okay. by their own so generation. We're going to move on. We're going to move on now. That's all I want. Exactly. We're going to move on now. Earlier today, I spoke to the chair of D the Adoption Authority and Special Rapporteur on Child Protection, Geoffrey Shannon. He wanted to put forward his views on what either outcome would mean for adoption. There'll be time to discuss his comments after we have a look now at what he had to say. I want to say at the outset that I'm not advocating that people should vote one way or another. The purpose of this interview is to provide clarity around the adoption issues. I think it's important to state at the outset that no one has a right to a child. A child has a right to a family. Last year there were 112 domestic adoptions. The Adoption Authority is the authority 
responsible for granting all consensual adoption orders. That would be the vast majority of adoptions. So, for example, last year there were 69 step-parent adoptions. That's where the biological mother marries somebody other than the birth father. There were 23 adoptions of children from our care system. And what I think will surprise people is there were only six domestic infant adoptions. And that shows how Irish society has changed over the years. And how adoption operates is that there are two stages to the consent process. You consent to the placement, and then you consent to the making of the final adoption order. Whether people vote yes or no, the adoption process is not going to change. And the reason for that is that sole applicants have been in a position to apply to assess for adoption since 1991. So for over 20 years, sole applicants, and that includes a partner in a cohabiting relationship, whether of the same sex nature or a heterosexual relationship, the partner has been in a position to apply to be assessed for adoption. So we take just that example. If you are a same sex couple or a heterosexual couple in a cohabiting relationship, one person would apply to adopt. The assessment would include both people, but at the end of the day, the adoption order would be granted to one of the partners in either the same-sex relationship or a heterosexual relationship where they've been cohabiting. The Children and Family Relationships Act extends the right to assessment for adoption to civil partners and cohabiting couples who have been living together for a period of three years. And from a child's perspective, that means the child will have a legal relationship with the two partners in a cohabiting relationship. And just to be clear, does the adoption process ever favour an opposite-sex couple over a same-sex couple? The best interest of the child is the key requirement in determining whether somebody gets the licence to adopt. And just to explain how the adoption process operates, there's two parts to the adoption process. The first is the assessment process. So if you're a sole applicant, if you're a married couple, if you're a cohabiting a couple or a same-sex couple, what happens is you're, you're assessed. And that assessment looks at your capacity to parent a child into adulthood. It is not concerned with gender or sexual orientation. The second part of that, and there's a lot of misinformation out there on this issue, is the placement. Is how will the placement occur? I want to be absolutely clear on this. The birth mother is hugely important in that process. The birth mother's consent must be full, free and informed. The birth mother is involved from the earliest stages in the adoption process. So when the birth mother decides that she wants to place her child for adoption, she is involved in the process. What happens is the mother is then shown a selection of between three and seven anonymous profiles of prospective adopters from a national panel of about 70 prospective adopters. And the birth mother's decision determines the outcome. So ultimately, the, the birth mother can say, I don't want uh, a same-sex couple taking care of my child or adopting my child. Absolutely, that, that, that is the position. And I would take that one step further. The birth mother, on occasion, has elected to place her child with a sole applicant in a same-sex relationship. So the mother determines who the child is placed with. What do you say to the case being made, Geoffrey, that all things being equal, if this referendum is passed, it will be impossible to choose a, an opposite-sex couple in the adoption process over a same-sex couple because it could be deemed discriminatory? I think it's important to realise that the birth mother's views are critically important in deciding who a child is placed with. If the birth mother decides that she does not want to place her child with a same-sex couple, that decision will invariably be respected. The best interest of the child is the overarching consideration in determining whether an individual or a couple get the licence to adopt. And we need to look at the statistics over the last number of years. And if I give you last year's statistics, 88% of children placed for adoption were placed with married couples. 12% were placed with sole applicants. Of that 12%, between 0 and 2% were placed with same-sex couples. 
I don't envisage that those figures are going to change significantly over the coming years. As I said, whether you vote yes or no on the 22nd of May, the adoption process is not going to change. And that was Geoffrey Shannon there. Um, Senator Roland Mullen, I want to just get your reaction to that, and, and particularly to the last yeah, point. I'm not Nothing reassured, will change. And I'll tell you why I'm not reassured. Because, because what Geoffrey Shannon is saying is completely different to what the Minister said in the debates. Because amendments were tabled in the Shannon to try, and I think Senator Fidelina Hill Means was involved in it, to try and provide for the right of a birth mother. And it won't, the birth mother won't always be on the scene, of course, but to try and provide for the right of a birth mother to know the circumstances of a placement for adoption. And the government ruled that out completely. Sure and I think. And I, and I think. I'll just finish my point. We'll come to you. I, I, I know Simon is going to, it's, it's, it's a, to attack me for, for not believing a government expert, but quite frankly, I'm very disappointed. I'm very disappointed in all the government experts. The children's rights groups who get money for the state, none of whom seem to be able to affirm the basic truth that a child should be entitled to a father and mother wherever possible. So I think, I think Devin Shannon, I think Devin Shannon is talking about protocols which have no legal standing and I suspect that any attempt to legislate in future to provide, and this is what the senior counsel's opinion to Iona Institute makes clear, any attempt to provide for any preference for father-mother parenting would fall foul of the radical new equality as between same-sex married couples and heterosexual but what about couples. the interests of the child that, that are paramount, according to him, the chair of the Adoption Authority of Ireland? I, I, and I voted for the best interests of the child with the children's uh, rights uh, referendum. But the problem is, when you're determining best interests, you can determine and make decisions on the basis of how wealthy the couple are or how old the couple are. But the one thing you will not be able to take into account because of the equality in the article of the Constitution we're changing is gender, is the father-mother dimension. Because that would be held up and possibly even knocked down in the European well, he courts. Says they already don't. Well, to, be, to be honest with you, he's talking uh, about the current situation. I don't think he's weighing the impact of this constitutional change and the possible impact Sorry. of well, European that's, that's court jurisprudence but, in this area. But Roman, that's what I yeah. asked him. I asked him, regardless of whether this vote, this referendum is passed or not, will anything change in the adoption yeah. process? And he very clearly said that nothing yeah. would change. I, I have to tell you, I'm not reassured by any government sponsored agencies at the moment and I tell you you didn't you didn't ask him you didn't ask him Claire Claire, you didn't ask him about the possible impact of the European Court of Human Rights, which has ruled that where, same, where states allow same-sex marriage, everything has to be equal from then on. So with the best will in the world, Jeffrey might prefer it to be possible to say all things being equal, a mother and father, but that just doesn't make sense in the so light Jeff, of the Irish constitutional nonsense. change, okay. but it Maybe. certainly doesn't it's, it's make just... sense in the light of European Court of Human Rights jurisprudence. All right. Sorry, Minister I mean, Povey. Can I just appeal to people? Can I... Can I, can I appeal to people who are watching this evening? Geoffrey Shannon is probably Ireland's leading knowledge on adoption uh, and on, on childcare and, uh, and the relationship between children and parents. Um, the problem that Ronan has is if somebody makes a rational, real argument that doesn't suit his political argument, he just won't accept it. Uh, and that is, that is what has been happening here. And that is what's happened in the, in the Oireachtas too. No. Every political party in Ireland, and, uh, and I can tell you they don't exactly love each other, they are, they are all advocating for the same thing here because they have been reassured by the kind of arguments we've just heard from Geoffrey. But no, Ronan won't accept it because it doesn't suit the agenda that he is trying to pursue here to try and spread a fear and a worry amongst no. people who are genuine Not fair. in their, in their Not worry fair. About, about child fair. welfare fair. and parenting. Not Not fair. About, no, no, Simon, sorry. I quoted a senior counsel's had, opinion. Ronan had, had plenty of time right. to make his point. Ronan had plenty of time to make his point. The, what is happening in this debate is we are turning a debate and a discussion that should be about love and people who love each other and people who want to spend the rest of their lives together. Okay. Uh, and we are turning that into an argument around children uh, right. when actually we need to debate those parenting and children issues around how we put legislation so, together. And Jeffrey Shannon has confirmed that and I would encourage people to listen right. to him. Yeah, the way you encourage the IDA to call for a yes vote Dr. and so Dr. Tom on. Finnegan, we're going to get your legal opinion now because you're a lawyer working on, on the no side uh, with mother, Mothers and Fathers Matter. What do you think about what you heard Jeffrey Shannon saying? Well, he completely evaded the constitutional question. 
which is the issue of whether the Oireachtas will be free in future to give a stated preference in law for a child to have a mother and a father. He just completely sidestepped it. He also sidestepped the European Convention of Human Rights jurisprudence in the area. So it's, it's a very incomplete answer. In relation to Minister Coveney, he's made a couple of points in relation to the issue of surrogacy. He cited a legal opinion that supposedly gave a particular answer to a surrogacy question. Minister, the opinion wasn't asked that question on surrogacy. It's just not anywhere in but the it document. Made the point. It made the point. You don't want to accept it, but it made the point. The Minister is asking us to believe that if the referendum passes, the Oireachtas will be absolutely free to prohibit surrogacy outright. But let's think about this. If the referendum passes, same-sex married couples will have a constitutional right to procreate. For same-sex men especially, mm -hmm. that sorry, must mean... Sorry. Not, even, not that's even the Iona Institute's no, that document no. says. That's, it, it says it's, quite clearly... That's so in the basic Pakistan. a constitutional that's point that, that, that it's that there is no There is no right... Con um, even Conor O'Mahony, the right, Conor the right O'Mahony to procreate does that not include surrogacy, okay. and you know it as a lawyer, but you don't want to say right, it. Sorry, sorry, sorry Claire, if we could just come in. If the referendum passes, that if the referendum passes, that will, in, in and of itself, put pressure on the courts to recognise as a constitutional right to procreate surrogacy. And if that happens, it would be impossible for the Iraqis to prohibit surrogacy. Because okay. okay. another lawyer on this side, the courts have instructed the government to legislate in this area. It's outrageous. The courts have instructed the government to legislate. That sounds very interesting. I thought this was a democracy. Uh, I thought this was a democracy where the people would be consulted, but of course there yes, was very little the consultation the about this. The okay. No, before, you, before works, we even have the law on, 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 on surrogacy, you're going to tie the hands okay. of the Iraqis. Mary O'Toole, you're a senior counsel. You work with couples who are, want to avail of surrogacy? Yes, and I've been 35 years a family lawyer, so I have been in every type of, of child case and every stripe of child case. And this notion that there is going to be a right to surrogacy, uh, um, the Minister is perfectly right. The Iona opinion is predicated on the basis that there is not going to be a right to surrogacy right. for couples. So that what we're talking about are circumstances where <coughs> children now have recognised constitutional rights pursuant to Article 42A, which has only been operative since the end of April. The Iona opinion does not address that point. It recites 42A but does not analyse it. So when Geoffrey Shannon tells you that in every case concerning children, the best interest of the child in each individual case will be considered, he is absolutely right. Mary, that does, is now a constitutional mandate. Does, does marriage confer a right to children? No. no. There is a right to procreate on, uh, on heterosexual, uh, for heterosexual couples which can be regulated to the point where it can be extinguished okay. and it has only ever been concerned with circumstances where uh, p people are able to procreate themselves. All right. Now, this is not, it is not fair to say that there is a right to procreation because you are okay. involving yes. third parties. Senator, there Fidelia will be a woman Lees, who gives birth. You are one of the few politicians who's come out on the no side of this. What are your concerns, particularly in relation to surrogacy? Well, we are we're being asked to vote on um, on May 22nd, Claire, on Article 41 of the Constitution. That is the article on the family. To say it has nothing to do with children is absurd. Family has always had to do with children. I think, I think you, you, have, you have particular concerns around the adoption I, issue I, rather than surrogacy. Let me tell you this. I started out being a yes voter on this because I believe in love. I believe in equality. But when I drill down into those 17 words, marriage without distinction to sex, and linked with Article 41, which is the article that gives you the right to found a family. Of course it's got to do with children. And the only way... The only way, Claire, for two men in a same-sex union is to avail of the services of a surrogate, or two women to avail of the services of a donor. And by so doing, they're ensuring that there is a, a mother or a father left out of the agenda. Sorry. And the child... And by the way, Claire, by the way in the... And by the way, Claire, in the children and family continue relationships continue the point bill. about adoption, I placed an amendment to the Minister, Minister Fitzgerald, regarding the birth wishes of the mother around family type. And I concur with Geoffrey Shannon on quite a bit of what he said. Because I'm an adoptive parent myself, I went through assessment twice. The best interests of the child are always paramount. However, when I put it to the Minister that 
the, birth, the, the wishes of the mother or the birth parents about the baby that they're placing for adoption around family type would be considered. Would that be the case? And she said, yes to me. I then went back and I said to her, well, please take my amendment then, because this is going to strengthen the bill. She refused to take the amendment. That's so are you concerned then, I just want to follow this up, are you, are you concerned then that if this referendum is passed, that a, that a, a same-sex couple could challenge the adoption process, could Absolutely. challenge the decision of a birth mother not and, to have their I child placed... And I say so, they've done it successfully an, in Massachusetts, a, yeah. because after, after same-sex marriage... And they could certainly uh, challenge any attempt to rule out surrogacy because it would be the only way that some of them could start a family. So the idea okay, that the sorry. courts would not bend to that given the strong constitutional equality for a same-sex married fa family and a heterosexual married family, it's legal nonsense. Oh, it sorry. really is. Minister yeah. Minister. Yeah. So, that, is, that is totally misrepresent, misrepresenting the situation. First of all, can I, can I say that there are a lot of same-sex families in Ireland that are not recognised by the Constitution but their families and children are involved. And that's because, that's because uh, um, there may have been a child by a previous relationship or, or, or whatever. And those families are currently in Ireland, they may have been together for two decades or three decades and they still can't aspire to being recognised as a family in the eyes of the Constitution because they can't get married. They, they, have a, they have a special uh, arrangement. In relation to surrogacy, uh, it has been made very clear to government, in terms of the legal advice that we have available to us, that, is, that, that it is up to the government to legislate for surrogacy, just like we've had to legislate for adoption. And that is what determines what parents can access and what they can't. And the point that Fidelma makes, uh, and I agree with her on one thing, okay. this is about families. Yes. But, but the, the question that people... Oh, hang on, let me answer. The question... The question that people are being asked on Friday week is not, is not about the legalities of how parents access children. It is simply a question of do we recognise a same-sex couple as being allowed to marry or not. Oh, no. The other oh, issues, no, simply, the other issues oh, are time. covered. You can't. The other issues are covered by legislation Simon. that the bureaucracy needs Let's to hear. determine. Simon. Simon. You, and you know that. And I think oh, Jeffrey Shannon Simon. also confirmed it. He has no vested interest. Simon. 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 You, you can't this. wish away the fact that this changes the rules around starting families and in your children and family relationships bill. It does not change the rules. In your children and family relationships bill, I did let you. I did let you. Back finish. To this issue. I did let you finish. In your children and family relationships bill, everybody is, al is allowed to start a family using donor sperm or donor Absolutely. eggs. No We've distinction. Known. It's quite Let's clear what the government's intentions are. And All what right. you have never done as a government is heard from people like Joanna Rose, a woman who is father of the donor, and there have before. been hundreds right. possibly of siblings. The government never yeah. engaged with the people who have been hurt by surrogacy okay, well, or who have I been want to get hurt some more by donor assisted human We have heard the story. We will now. All right. Carol Coulter, uh, Director of the Child Care Law Reporting Project. You have some concerns around surrogacy, well, but you are a yes I, I'm voter. I'm not speaking as Director of the, of the project. This is uh, entirely my personal opinion. And first, I want to say, uh, I mean, I actually have a lot of concerns over surrogacy, particularly commercial surrogacy, because I think people can be exploited yeah. through commercial yeah. surrogacy. I don't think it has anything to do with the proposal because the vast majority of people availing of surrogacy are heterosexual married couples setting up a poster family of a mother and a father and a baby. That's where surrogacy is most widely used throughout the world and I think sometimes to the disadvantage of you know, poor and vulnerable women yes. in third world countries. Right. But Louise, sorry, it has please, nothing Louise, to please. do with same-sex marriage All because right. marriage Louise, does not Louise, convey Louise, a Louise. right. It does not convey a right, right, right to create well, a family. Louise, that same -sex Louise Starry's on the no side. Do you so, agree with what you heard there, that surrogacy I, has nothing I, to do with I this? I don't agree. I'm a PhD researcher and I look at assisted reproduction laws and surrogacy laws in different EU countries. And what I can say is that in countries that have introduced same-sex marriage, it acts as an accelerant which drives demand for and acceptance of both donor-assisted reproduction and surrogacy. Amongst same-sex couples? Amongst same-sex couples. So, 
What will happen is that same-sex marriage will give um, constitutional status to donor assisted reproduction and surrogacy. Here, here. But what we can yeah. see is that it's already conspiring to drive national family law, Irish traditional family law, off its moorings. That happened with the Children and Family Relationships Act, and has happened with happening with planned um, surrogacy legislation. And I think Minister Coveney is misleading people. He's suggesting that the government can can decide to ban surrogacy or not. But the fact of the matter is that draft surrogacy legislation is already All working right, its way through. We're going, to move, we're going to move on. We're going to move on from that issue now. So I want to come to. Can I find a word on surrogacy, please? Very briefly, because no, I want to move because on. Because, because, because the, the issue here, everybody agrees that surrogacy is a worry, it's a difficult issue to manage, and it's a difficult issue to deal with in law. But, but the issue about to, surrogacy ban, is... Uh, just, need, can I just get your view on this? Because I'm sensing that you would want to ban surrogacy completely in this country. Am I, I, I right? Have, I have to say, personally, I have real concerns around surrogacy. For, um, for altruistic yeah, purposes? No, I have real concern, concerns around surrogacy across the board, but I want to see what the Department of Health comes up with, and we will debate it openly and in a transparent way. But you're not prepared way. to say but what, Mayor, what you I, think. No, you're not prepared no, to, to say... The point is, if the referendum the point, passes. No, sorry. And we've already, Simon, had Oregon Laura, Reproductive Laura, Medicine having trade we've, fairs in the Westbury Hotel. LGBT diversity okay, did a study sorry. in 2011. You know what? Gay I couples really, say they want surrogacy you know and they need marriage. Okay. To achieve it. I really want to move on to some other they issues in, in this achieve. debate. That's what uh, That's what Dee Dee happening so we, have, we have Dee Courtney here. Dee, you're welcome. Um, you were raised by two mothers, although your father was still around. I mean, what, are you, what do you think about what you're hearing tonight about same-sex couples? Well, I just think that uh, everyone needs to understand that my family love each other as much as any other family. We're only as different or as unique as any other family. And... It, it can be quite hard to have to explain that. Um, but we do love each other as much as any other family. And I know that gay couples are working incredibly hard and giving an incredible amount of love to their children, just like any other couple. And I think if people vote yes in the referendum, it will really send a message, not just that our families will get constitutional protection, but also it will send a message to our families that people support us and respect us and think of us as the same as any other family, as loving as any other family. Okay. Um, Mark Hickey, where's Mark? Mark, you lived in Massachusetts in the United States, am I right, where same-sex marriage was legalised. What was the impact of that and why are you concerned as a result? Right, yeah, my wife and I, we have a young family. We moved back from uh, Massachusetts last year. We were there for six years. Um, Massachusetts has had legal same-sex marriage for 2000, since 2004, quite a long time. And I, I can speak directly to the... Um, indirect consequences for wider society, not those directly impacted children. Um, I'm talking about um, families around the place. And we were we directly perceived um, initiatives to uh, promote um, same-sex relationships on a par with, with, with relationships between mothers and fathers in the schools, in the local schools. And this was done towards children of as early as six and seven years old and even younger than that. And what was harmful? about that? Well, it's done against, against the consent and, 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 yeah. and in many cases against yeah. the, 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 yeah. the knowledge of parents. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of parents, I, 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 as, a, as a father myself, I, I don't want my children, um, I want to control how my children are ex exposed to these, these, these issues okay. uh, through time. And, and that's a very subversive of, 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 of the rights of parents. OK, we're going to take a very quick break. We'll be back after this with lots more, including the result of our poll conducted today on this very issue. Welcome back to our discussion on the same-sex marriage referendum. Now, we spoke a lot about children, surrogacy and adoption before the break. I want to get to, really, I suppose, what we're being asked on, on the day, uh, Ronan Mullen. Do you fundamentally oppose the idea of two people of the same gender being married? Well, Senator Fergal Quinn and myself actually tabled amendments in the Shannon which would have accepted that, but provided that no child could be deprived of the possibility of being brought up by a father and mother, and those amendments were not accepted. But you did so, oppose civil partnership. Yes, I did, because the government rammed it through like a steam train in the same intolerant way that this government is now doing with this, without even admitting all of the complexities that are involved. Can I just tell you, what I'm finding as I go around doing my ordinary political work in Galway, and I'm talking to people, and they say, when they realise that civil partnership already gives all the legal rights of pension, tax, as marriage. They're saying, you know what they're saying? They're saying, that's what I thought I was voting for. 
But it's all there already. So the difference is the right to start families using artificial all means. Right. And people are rightly right. concerned Simon about Cogney, that. Simon Coveney, what is the... No, but that's a really important point. Because that comes up all the time. Yeah. What is the difference between civil partnership and marriage? What's the difference? Well, first of all, there's about 160 legal differences. No. That's the first thing. Secondly, secondly, well, I mean, I mean, that's that's what the law society says. So, I mean, yeah. maybe you won't be, maybe you won't accept that either. All right, just yeah. just let, let him answer. Um, but actually, the real difference here is actually recognition in the eyes of the state, because the people who want to get married want to be treated and want their relationships to be treated the same as everybody else, as opposed to having a segregated area where we put gay people. And we say, well, actually, we don't accept that their relationship is of such a stature that we can call it marriage. Instead, what I'm saying to people, as a married man with three beautiful children and a beautiful wife and a very, very happy life because of that marriage, what I'm saying is that I want to share that. And I want to allow people and be generous with marriage to allow people who offer no threat to uh, traditional marriage or, or family in Ireland, but simply want to express their love and want to be accepted for that. That's what this referendum is about. And, and, yet, again, and yet again, Ronan wants to bring the issue back onto access to children and parenting because that you, is you the area that they know okay, they can muddy the waters and, uh, and create concern. And we, about. You, you don't, you don't need Lord. to attack me, Simon. The Atlantic Philanthropies... Oh, I do. Atlantic Philanthropies, Chuck Feeney's, which has put millions into pushing for this yes vote from America, acknowledged that civil partnership in Ireland is better than same-sex marriage in a lot of American states. Such are the rights that it gives. Simon, you talk about being a father. I'm Ask care, gay I'm people caring, what they want. I'm caring for Ask my gay father. Ask what they want. I, 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 you've heard from some of them here. Yes, I have. Who, who, but ask who, the majority who believe of them. a child has a right to a father and mother. You've... I'm caring because for my... Because I've walked the streets with them okay. I'm caring for the last three or four to, weeks to, and they've told me I their to, stories. All right. I want to talk about civil partnership because it is an issue that comes up a lot. Um, Dr Connor Buggy on this side. Where's Connor? Connor, you are in a civil partnership, am I correct? Yep. Doesn't that cover all the legal concerns? No, it doesn't. So what's the difference as far as you're concerned? As far as I'm concerned, my partner and I, Dave, we've been together for 15 years. He's my family. And we... We, we weren't aware that civil, civil marriage was going to come down the line, so when civil partnership came along, we, we jumped at the chance to offer any sort of protection to, to our partnership. And, you know, we, we didn't think any government would, would, would promote civil marriage to us in the future, so, you know, we took what we could get. And, you know, we realised at the time that it was, it was second rate, and in comparison to our brothers and sisters, let me talk... We were in comparison to my brothers and sisters and Dave's brother, who are married, our siblings are aware that our partnership is second rate. Our parents are aware. And this, this causes hurt. And every day I see these posters saying, civil partnership, we have it already. They don't understand that this hurts the, the gay sons and daughters of this country. It hurts the parents of gay sons. <laughs> and All right. All right. Okay. I'm grateful for my civil partnership. It's not the same as what my brothers and sisters have with Eileen their partners. King. Eileen King on, on this side, where are you sitting, Eileen? That, that is a, a heartfelt plea, really, for somebody who just wants the same as everybody else is afforded in, in this society. Sure, there's just one major difference, and that's marriage is a man and a woman. It yeah. has always been yeah. for yes. thousands yeah. of years. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Yeah. Um, I think it's really important that when we look at the question that we're being asked, that we remember we're being asked to redefine marriage. Um, we're being asked to say that marriage is not a man and a woman united together. And for me as a woman, I find that highly offensive. Women do matter. And there's no such thing as marriage without women. There's no such thing as marriage without men. So to say that two men and two women are identical to a man and a woman in marriage is simply not true. Yes. Yes. And we are being asked, mm -hmm. as an Irish people, to say that this is a truth. And, and we cannot do that. We cannot found a social yes. system on a okay. lie. Staying, staying on this side, Father Brian. Father Brian McEvitt, you're editor of Alive magazine. Your concerns? My concerns, I think, is that we're being told that this is an equality issue. Mm -hmm. And I'm just kind of asking myself, is it really an equality issue or is it basically an unjust demand being presented as an equality issue or being disguised as... Why is it an unjust demand? 
Um, it's in, well, first of all, it's unjust because of the injustice, injustice it would do to children, that it would do to uh, all married couples and young people that are hoping to get married because it redefines all marriages um, and it's about... unjust to the society. And when I say it's a demand, uh, the question is who is making this demand? Mm. And really the, the people making this, the, the principal driving force behind this demand, as far as I can see, is the, uh, the lobby that is being funded by the uh, American Foundation that has pumped something between five and ten million into dollars into promoting this and can, can uh, I ask homosexual you, relationship. Can, can I ask you what you think the damage will be if this referendum is passed to the Catholic ethos in schools, for example? Um, th that's kind of a secondary issue. I, so you're I, not concerned about that? No, because, I'm not saying I'm not concerned was, about it. I'm yeah. saying it's a secondary issue. What I'm concerned about is the redefining of marriage, okay. basically changing the nature of marriage. All right. With Father Jerry Byrne on this side, uh, Father Jerry Byrne, also a Catholic priest. Where are you, Father Jerry? O'Connor. Oh, sorry, O'Connor. Apologies, <laughs> uh, Father Jerry. Yeah. You are actually voting yes. Yes. Why? Essentially, I believe it's in the common good, which is a, a fundamental principle of, of Catholic uh, social teaching. If you're a priest, one of the privileges of being a priest is that you're welcome in the front door to sit at the kitchen table of all sorts of families. And right across the city, there are a range of different types of uh, families. And I've had the privilege of sitting in the kitchens of all sorts of families. And one of the things that, that happens there is when you meet people in their home and you see how they live and you listen to their concerns and their anxieties, is that you get a very rich sense of, of what family life is like. And I believe that if you went into the, the home of a same-sex uh, couple and you went in with love and in a non-judgmental manner, that you would come out uh, convinced that this All right. couple needs support. All and right. Roland Mullins, do you want to respond to that? I, I would agree. I would agree 100%. Every family deserves the same respect. I'm reminded of Pope Francis. Who am I to judge? But Pope Francis is also very clear that a child has a right to a mother and a father, and that's why marriage should be between well, a man and a woman. What do you think? You've got a Catholic priest there yeah, who's going well, to vote yes. I, 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 I approach it from the common good that it should make sense. I mean, when I think of somebody like Heather Barwick, a woman uh, who was brought up by a lesbian couple, her mother, she loves her mother, respects her and her same-sex partner, but she has spoken eloquently about the grief of not having her father in her life and having been deprived that. We <clears throat> haven't heard enough about the suffering of children who discover that they can't have access to that precious genetic relationship between either a father and a mother. Okay. It'll happen a lot anyway in life, All right. but you should we, never I deprive to, I a want child to allow to yeah. I want to allow both Minister Simon Coveney and Senator Ronan Mullen, one minute each now to close the programme. The order of the closing statements was decided by random selection, which was overseen by an adjudicator outside the RTE News and Current Affairs Department. So we're going to start now with Minister Simon Coveney. I was up early this morning, at half past six, getting ready to come to Dublin. But before I left, uh, I went into the, the bedroom of my three daughters. And I looked at the three of them. The oldest is only five. Uh, and I said to myself, how would I respond as a father uh, if one of my daughters in 15 years' time comes to me and says, Dad, I'm gay. I want you to love me and respect me for it and treat me the same as my two sisters. And, I, and that is the question that every voter in Ireland is being asked on Friday week. There is an appeal coming from the gay community in Ireland to ask to be accepted I have walked the streets with many of them. They've told me their stories. These are gentle, loving people who simply want the same protections in the Constitution that everybody else has. And I am appealing to people to listen to those calls. All of our neighbours in Europe, Portugal, Spain, France, Holland, the Netherlands, <laughs> Belgium, Luxembourg and the UK have okay. all done this. All right, Minister, and I hope that Ireland will time. be able to do the up. same and create a hugely positive All message right. that All we right. can send to the gay community. Thank you, Minister. And now... And now a closing statement from Senator Ronan Mullen. 
No country has yet voted for this, and yet it's going on like we're supposed to be the last people to do it. Voters are discovering now that same-sex couples already have full legal recognition in civil partnership, and the same tax, social welfare and other benefits as married couples, and that's good. But a yes vote means a constitutional right to start families. And for many male same-sex couples, this must mean eggs harvested from some women and then other women acting as surrogate mothers for nine months. And that's the last experience of a mother's love that that child or those children will ever have, and that is simply unfair. If we vote yes, the Dáil and Shannon will not be able to restrict this and won't be allowed to give any preference to a child having a father and a mother whenever that's possible. We should, of course, give legal support to all families. Everybody deserves love and respect. But no child should be deliberately deprived of a mother or father. Civil partnership does the job. It respects same-sex couples. Now let's put equality for children first. Please vote no. To finish now, earlier today we asked our Fairburn Live a more smartphone panel of over a thousand people, how would you vote with regards to adding this wording to the Constitution? Marriage may be contracted in accordance with law by two persons without distinction as to their sex. Of the 860 people who said they will vote, 76% said yes, 18% said no and 6% don't know. That's it for tonight. Thank you very much for watching and my thanks to our studio audience for a respectful and informative debate. I'm back on the radio Saturday at one o'clock. Hope to see you back here next Monday at 10.35. Good night. Thank you very much. Boyfriend cannot have a child without a parent outside of our family. All same-sex marriage does is to deprive the child of a right to that parent. But also, it means we can't legally privilege a mother and father model in adoption. And it puts surrogacy at the heart of family law. Senator, I understand you share my concerns for families and putting this into family law. Yeah, well, I just think that the redefinition of family is going to have severe consequences. And I think most people who think about this will see that relationship between you know, gay couple, two men or two women, is different. It's, it's distinguished from a man and a woman. And that's yes. because of the children issue. Marriage, to me, is the only civil institution which unites kids with their mams and their dads. Now, why the minister and the Taoiseach and the Taunishta would want to abolish that institution, which in fact is the fundamental cornerstone of society, is beyond belief. I think it's unconscionable. You can't change what happened to me. You can't take away the loneliness and terror I felt then by depriving children of rights now. This referendum is not about signals or feelings. It's about children and family law. I hope you'll have the courage to vote no. That's Paddy Manning. And I want now to... I have a quick word with Paddy and first with Eamon, who's here. Eamon, you're here with, with your husband, Stephen. Paddy Manning and uh, Jim Daly raised concerns in his report about children. What do you say to that? I say that my marriage is about Stephen and me. It's about... Uh, the, the whole referendum is about same-sex marriage, and we're same-sex, obviously, and we're married. So I think we're in a pretty good position to be able to say um, how we feel about the whole thing. I don't really think it has to do with children. I think it's a red herring. I think... Children are already protected in the Constitution, in Article 42. The best, um, whatever best is, is for children is in that article. So um, I think that, that um, we're in a pretty good position to... And Stephen, what's your view? Because we saw Senator Jim Walter, I should say, voicing his concerns about children, and lots of people on the no side have raised similar issues. So obviously I'm here in support of yes equality and a yes in the marriage referendum on the 22nd of May. I have never been bullied in my life until now. I have never received hate mail in the post until now. Never experienced such cruelty until now. And all I can say is I'm here in support of a yes vote because I know yes is right for Ireland. I know yes is right for the children of Ireland, for our brothers and our sisters and our families. That's what it's about. It's about our love for each other okay. and the future. Can I all just right. say one more thing, just one more little thing. My mother got married last year. She was lucky enough to find a new husband and she's 71 and he's 76. And I don't think children are on the agenda for them. <laughs> I, I may be wrong. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Paddy Manning. Paddy, we, we saw your report there and we've heard from, from Eamon and Stephen who are married but married in British Columbia. I mean, isn't that just a strange thing that they can get married in British Columbia but not in Ireland? I can't really comment on their personal issues there. I can't see why they couldn't have availed of um, civil partnership law here, which does everything you need to do. There are differences. Well, of course there are. We're different. I'm not the same as a straight person. I make no apology for that. I don't want to be. I'm a gay man. And I'm very proud of that. And I love gay people. I just wish there was lots more of us. Make my social life a lot better. <laughs> you know? And if you want to talk about cruelty and bullying and all of that, I received a tsunami of hate from Yes campaigners for my stance. Some of that has been so bad that I've actually feared for my personal safety and other people close to me. And that was shocking. The bullying that's going on in this campaign, the bullying of ordinary people who are being told there are opinions they can't hold, that they can't even think about this. And the politicians have stood over this. We have, if you put up a poster for the No campaign, you are guaranteed it'll be taken down. I, have made a, I am in the process of making a formal complaint to the Gardaí about a photograph that I've received declaring there are now no, no posters left in Carlo. People are boasting on social media of criminal activity and nothing's been done. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later on, about the fear around saying, yeah. saying no and discussing that. I want, to come, I want to come back over to this side now. Enda Morgan. Enda, you're a, a yes supporter. Tell us why. Sure. Um, my eldest daughter, Rachel, is 27. And about five years ago, she came out to my wife and I. And that night was, it was pretty harrowing, it, not harrowing. Tonight, 10 days to polling, we discuss all the issues in the same-sex marriage referendum debate and the chair of the Adoption Authority addresses the impact of the vote on adoption in Ireland. Welcome to the programme. In just over 10 days' time, Ireland will go to the polls. On Friday, the 22nd of May, the electorate will be asked if the following amendment can be added to the Constitution. Marriage may be contracted in accordance with law by two persons without distinction as to their sex. And there are just two options, yes or no. We'll be debating all of the issues over the next hour with Fine Gael Director of Elections for the Referendum, Minister Simon Coveney, and Independent Senator Ronan Mullen. And our audience, of course, who are evenly divided between those in favour of and those against the referendum. First, though, here are two authored films, each advocating a different outcome to the referendum for very different reasons. The order of these reports was decided by random selection, overseen by an adjudicator outside the RTE News and Current Affairs Department. My name is Eamon Farrell and I'm an Irish married man. This is my husband, Stephen. We married in Canada almost six years ago. It was an incredibly happy time for us. But it was also filled with sadness at the fact that we had to marry in another country, not in our home. When I asked Stephen to marry me almost six years ago, I didn't ask him to gay marry me, to civil partner me, or to same sex marry me. I asked him to marry me because I love him, and he's the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. The first time I was ever called a queer, I was seven years old and it was by an adult in school. The last time I was called a queer was a few days ago when I was out on a canvas. And we've also received hate mail in recent days. But I'm not a queer. I'm a married Irish man. Essie. Ireland is great because of its people. People like my friend, Senator David Norris, who fought to win the legal right to be gay for every LGBT person in Ireland. I asked him what he thought when he heard we had gotten married. Well, I thought, isn't it wonderful that young people find happiness together and are not as scarred as people of, of my generation were? So I thought it was wonderful and I applauded. Because I think it was rather sad 
the, the two of you had to go abroad uh, to validate your love. I, 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 I don't see why that couldn't happen in this country. What do you think the repercussions will be if there is a no vote? Oh, if there's a no vote, it'll be the most tremendous slap in the face for young gay people. So I really hope, for the sake of young people and, and gay children, that it will not happen. So when the vote passes, hopefully, and if we get to get married in Ireland, will you come to our wedding? I would love to come to your wedding. It will be one of the happiest days of my life. What you're voting on in this referendum is real life. It's our lives. The essence of our lives is love. And at the end of my life, there will be Stephen. And that should be recognised equally. Myself and my husband love Ireland. We love living here and we are committed to her future. I've always believed in my country and I always will. It's time now to see at last if my country believes in me. My name is Paddy Manning. I'm gay and I'm voting no. I grew up in an Ireland where gay people like me were not just criminals, we were invisible. How could we find love when we couldn't even find each other? I was arrested. Not for doing something indecent, but for being naive enough to fall for a Garda sting operation. Enough that I had approached the guard involved. You can't imagine my terror or my belief that I now had only one very final way out. I've always believed that gay people like me are as entitled to love, happiness and stability as everybody else. But we don't need to redefine marriage for that. Outside Leinster House, members of the gay community were celebrating the bill to decriminalise homosexuality. Decriminalisation and civil partnership sorted all that for gay people. Like every same-sex couple. I and the boy... Because the fact that she declared that she was gay were har harrowing from the perspective that she was under such stress. She was so distressed coming out to us. And she explained to us that for several years before she came out, she was living in this bubble of anxiety and self-doubt. And she was really trying to come to terms with her sexuality and come to terms, more importantly, with coming out to us. And I held her in my arms when she came out. She was crying and shaking uncontrollably. And that is not a very, very pleasant experience. So what does, the, what does a, a yes in this referendum mean then for you? It means we are showing our children that we're bringing acceptance to their lives, recognition. We're normalising it. It means that, you know, if a no vote came in, we would be saying to our children, OK, you're gay, but it's just not quite right to be so. All right, we're going to talk to some people now who've changed their minds. <laughs> Timothy. <laughs> Timothy um, Sutton, you were voting yes, am I right? But you've changed and you've now decided you're going to be a no voter. Correct. Tell us why. Because I looked into it, and, and since then, this proposal taken, you know, with the provisions of the Children's and Family Relations Bill removes mention of mother and father from a whole range of existing legislation. And at 37, Brunrock Naherne has stood us well, and I wouldn't like to see any fissures in the, in the family unit. So it was particularly those issues that you have and the concerns you have around the family and children that changed your mind, that, that changed you from being a yes voter to a no? Correct. OK, and we have Derek Byrne on this side. And Derek, you crossed the divide from the other side, if you like, because you had written about being a no voter, but now you're a yes voter. Yeah, I feel like I'm coming out all over again today um, <laughs> with um, my article uh, talking about why I'm now deciding to vote yes. And um, I think initially what I was concerned about was the lack of debate, particularly within the gay community, on the issue and what it was exactly we were looking for by um, voting for a change in, in marriage law in, in the referendum. Um, but through talking to friends, and I mean, I genuinely did listen to what people had to say. I, I have uh, experienced some bullying from within gay ranks, which hasn't been pleasant. Um, but I really put my heart and soul into the debate and finally decided to pare it all back. And I was delighted to hear you read the wording of the, the referendum, because I think we've really forgotten that throughout this entire yeah, 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 yeah. debate. So... 
So you may you may not you may not agree with the institution of marriage per se, but as an act of solidarity, you're voting yes. Yeah, I, as an act of solidarity, as a gay man, I'm voting yes because I think at the end of the day, and David Norris used the word uh, validation earlier on. It's purely about our right to love and validation for our own relationships. Okay. And Kirsten, on this side then, Kirsten, you're welcome to the programme. Hi, how are you? What concerns do you have around this referendum? Um, well, I suppose for my generation, I feel uh, very much so that making new laws, uh, particularly when it comes to marriage, um, it's not just redefining marriage, you're actually reconfiguring the family unit. Um, and I think that in, in itself, I think, ultimately affects society's social standing and society's structure, the structure of, of society. And uh, for my generation, I think there's an awful lot of pressure to, 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 for equality. But I don't see much equality for children in this. Mm -hmm. Children, mm -hmm. where do the children... Mm -hmm. Every, every child deserves a mother and a father and the balance of both. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have gay friends. I have people that, are, that I love that are gay. I, it's not about gay versus not being gay. Uh, but I think it's very much so about um, the structure of man and woman. And you cannot deny the byproduct of marriage is children. Mm -hmm. And you can't deny what nature has intended. All right. Well, let's, yeah. let's go to our panellists now and discuss that further question. <laughs> Senator Ronan Mullen, that comes up time and time again. Issues around children, around the family, around surrogacy and adoption. Can you just tell us what your concerns are? Well, you're right, because if it was only about how we feel about gay people, I don't think anybody could oppose it. I certainly, speaking for myself, and I think for most people here... I want a society where there is love and respect for everybody, respect for people's private lives and their personal relationships. And I remember during the civil partnership debate where Senator Fergal Quinn and myself had objections and I opposed it because those objections were not dealt with. Those were objections that we totally supported the principle that there would be respect for people's relationships. But it, first of all, it has been made very clear uh, by the uh, referendum commission that we are not changing the definition of marriage. What we are doing here is we are allowing access to marriage to a minority of people in Ireland who have been locked out from that. I think okay? that shows no, how... No. And, and the second point I want to make is, is that Ronan seems to be suggesting that we should be segregating people on the basis of who's married and who's not. That would also apply to heterosexual couples. So, so we, would be, we would be preventing heterosexual couples who have decided not to get married for whatever reason, and they, and, and they may have very valid reasons, from not accessing certain services. So in other words, Rona wants to use marriage to actually lock same-sex couples out from certain services and supports that they may use, uh, that they may want to access. I don't know what and that is. And that is, that is fundamentally a charter for discrimination that Rona is looking to enshrine well, in law. Well, it would be. That's exactly what it, you're looking it, for. It, it would be. It would be if that's what my argument amounted to, but I don't know what planet the minister went to to get that bizarre interpretation. The fact is... The fact is... This is exactly just, for people, what just for people at home, right? Yes. You are concerned that if this referendum is passed, that married gay couples will have access to surrogacy when we legislate for surrogacy in this country. I am saying that before is we it, but even... But is that the case? No, let me just explain it. Before we even legislate for surrogacy, the government is proposing to tie our hands so that we wouldn't be able to restrict it, for example, to male-female couples. And can I assure you that I completely support every possible support for families in whatever situation they're in. And, for example, single parents, who the government have tried to get offended, even though none, none of this debate has been about them, but the government has tried, and it's, I really Sorry. regret this, Claire. the government has tried to use people. It has tried to use the mental health of young gay people. A responsible, okay. a responsible Claire, government would be to saying to people, a responsible government would be saying to people, no matter what way people vote, whether you're gay or straight, you are entitled to the okay. same love and respect yeah. which no, civil no, no, partnership no, gives. Okay. You shouldn't be using people as battering rams right. right. to right. score a political there's only, point. There's only one side in this argument, and it's, uh, it's only the leadership on the no side that are actually using children to try and scare people. Right? The, the, the position is, the position in, uh, is, and Ronan knows it, uh, we have to legislate and regulate surrogacy in Ireland. We may decide to outlaw surrogacy in Ireland as indeed lots of other countries have in the European That's Union. That's not what the Minister of no, no, Health has no, said. No, sorry, that is, that, is up to the, that is up to the Oireachtas to decide, right? 
and, uh, and we will have to decide that in due course. But the issues around surrogacy and the regulation or outlawing of it or legislation around it is a separate issue to this no, referendum. Right. This, is, this is a deliberate, okay. this is a deliberate political okay, strategy. Look, but can I finish on this point? No, there's a no, 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 misleading. No, no, even no, if you, you let me finish, you see, be sure. you don't want me to get to the point, Ron. No, I do, but you You don't want me to get to the point because you don't like to hear it. Get to the point really quickly. The issue is the leadership on the no side here want us to be debating surrogacy because they know that it is an issue that concerns people as it concerns me. And the more we talk about issue that concern, an issue that concerns people, the more people get spooked around issues around it. Simon, the okay. truth is to be, that I there is I, no connection right. between well, the question being asked on Friday week and surrogacy. I think, I, Simon, week I think and what, surrogacy. what I want you, you to do is to start caring. You know it. What, what, no. We're going to move on. Yeah, please. What, what, what I want you to do... It's a political what tactic. I, what I want you to know, I, no, I'm an independent. I don't follow the party whip. I try and tell it as it is. Um, I want you to respect. I want you to respect all children equally, and not to deprive so any children up front and in advance of the possibility of being brought into the world and cared for and loved okay. by their own so genetic We're going to move on. We're going to move on now. That's all I want. Exactly. We're going to move on now. Earlier today, I spoke to the chair of D the Adoption Authority and Special Rapporteur on Child Protection, Geoffrey Shannon. He wanted to afford his views on what either outcome would mean for adoption. There'll be time to discuss his comments after we have a look now at what he had to say. I want to say at the outset that I'm not advocating that people should vote one way or another. The purpose of this interview is to provide clarity around the adoption issues. I think it's important to state at the outset that no one has a right to a child. A child has a right to a family. Last year there were 112 domestic adoptions. The Adoption Authority is the authority responsible for granting all consensual adoption. It was important to do justice to other people like older folk or people who might be discriminated against because the government, like this government, was just rushing the thing through so fast. But I just want to, to get answer, to the, yes. the key issue around children. The, the concern is, you see, what we are amending here is the part of the Constitution where the state pledges to guard with special care the institution of marriage on which the family is founded. So we aren't just changing the meaning of marriage, we're changing the meaning of family that will enjoy constitutional protection. And as a result of that, it will be impossible for the Oireachtas in the future to make any preference for a child's right to have a father and a mother, their own father and mother preferably, but even to have a father and mother. And it isn't just about adoption where there's a small number of cases involved. If you take, you asked me about surrogacy. What surrogacy means, if you have a right to found a family, if you are a same-sex male couple, what that means in practically all circumstances is that an egg has to be harvested from one woman and another surrogate mother carries the child for nine months and that is the last bit of mothering that that okay. child ever gets. It will be impossible for us to restrict that. Okay. That is a legal fact. We will come back to you. Minister Simon Coveney, this debate has always come back to these issues around children, the family, adoption and surrogacy. Can you give us any clarity in relation to what Senator Mullen has just said? Of course I can, but can I just clarify a number, of, um, a number of issues that have been raised here. First of all, the definition of a family, according to the courts, consistent with what's in the Constitution, is a married mother and father with or without children. And so children is not the centre of what we're talking about here. The issues, the issues that relate to children uh, on the, the question of voting yes or no on Friday week relate directly to young gay children that are growing up and whether or not we accept them for who they are and what they are and who they choose to love. Okay. And, and, no, no, but, and the issues, but Minister, the if, issues if, of if, access to if, children, Claire, because that's the issue that's around the, surrogacy that's and adoption. That's the bit that they have concerns about here. The issue around here. access to children will not change whether you vote yes or no on Friday week. Because the, the position in relation to access to children and parenting requires the government to legislate, as we have done around adoption and guardianship and foster care uh, uh, and so on, uh, in the uh, uh, Child and, and Family Relationships Bill. As um, uh, Keith Mills, for example, when he was on The Late Late Show, pointed out, when he was actually asked by a young woman who was raised by two mothers, uh, and he was asked the question, do you recognise my family? And he said it's important to recognise here that parenting is a separate issue dealt with in legislation 
But what we're actually asking people to decide on here is, do we allow two same-sex people who love each other, who want to commit the rest of their lives together, do we allow them access marriage? That's what this is about, to reinforce their relationship, their love, who they are. Okay, so it and that's what this is about. So, Not surrogacy. Okay, so and finally, can I say on surrogacy, Claire? Finally, can I say on surrogacy, because it is important to nail this issue. Even the uh, legal opinion put together for the Iona Institute has confirmed that under no circumstances will governments be required to provide surrogacy to same-sex or heterosexual, sex, uh, uh, heterosexual couples if they're married because of a perceived right to have children. Okay, that is so not the case. There's no right I'm conferred afraid, here to I'm have afraid, children. Yeah, I'm afraid that's not nailing the issue. That's continuing the denial. Because the fact is... <laughs> if, and this is a legal fact. If you were a constitutional family based on marriage, which same-sex married couples will be, it would be impossible to do like some countries have done, for example, to say that if there's going to be surrogacy, it can only be where the child is going to a male-female parenting model. That would be simply unconstitutional, Simon, and I, I really don't so think the government what should additional deny rights, it. Just, I just want to ask you, what additional rights then do gay couples get in relation to surrogacy, do, well, as you see it? Well, the, 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 it, it is that we would not, the Oireachtas would not be able to give any preference to insisting that where possible a child would have a father and mother. Where Simon talks That's about true. parenting and fa it is Simon. Where Simon talks about parenting and families, we can legislate and rightly for situations, for example, where same-sex couples are bringing up a child of one or other of them. That already happens and guardianship can be provided and that would be one of the good things in the recent Children and Family Relationships Bill. But unfortunately, by changing the constitutional definition of marriage, we are copper fastening the bad things in that legislation and the legislature, the Oireachtas, will not be able to well, go back on well, them. First of all, first of all, first of all, first of all,